a magnificent setting two great teams what drama here they think it's all over with David and Rory as an England and Wasp rugby star who once did his bit for charity by posing in a nude calendar as Mr. January. Never have so many women prayed for February. <laughs> Bill Greening. <laughs> with Phil and Jonathan as a TV presenter and huge Bolton fan who followed his wedding with a honeymoon trip to the Reebok Stadium. He described it as the most magical day of his life. Bolton scraped a draw. <laughs> Vernon Kay. We begin the show with a rugby excuse. David, Rory and Phil, look at this. Here's ponderous Welsh Rugby Union captain Colin Charvis giving his all for the red shirt of Wales. Now England may have wobbled against Samoa on Sunday, but the Welsh skipper's performance against Tonga last week was also lacklustre and came in for some heavy criticism. But of course, Colin had a perfectly good reason but underperforming. So what was his excuse, David King? Because um, he's Welsh, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what position does he play? Sure. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he's Welsh, Who is yeah. he? Is your, is your, <laughs> okay, that's front row, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, he okay. plays uh, back row, he plays six. So your job is to retrieve the ball. Not you, David, I'm still nimble. No, it's great to have uh, Phil Greening on the show. And Jonathan, he's not a short, fat, ugly slaphead. Look, how could you say that about him? <laughs> <laughs> you don't do all right with the fair sex, do they? Like, don't they like your ears? Yeah, they love my ears, actually. Yeah. It's a conversation starter, you know? <laughs> Except you can't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Phil, I imagine it's not only a conversation starter, it's the main course in dessert as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand some things about rugby. Perhaps you could deny that. I don't understand uh, the offside rule in rugby. I don't understand the difference between a ruck and a maul. And I certainly don't understand how you got off with Natalie in Brugia. Now, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, did he? He got off with Natalie in yeah, actually said, isn't that fantastic? There's hope for us all. <sighs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you're her type. Maybe she likes the Uncle Fester look. Um, <laughs> don't walk there off, Phil. This is the only thing sure. you can get into at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> First England international rugby player we've had on since Will Carling that we've had on this show. Mm, possibly. Mm. I saw Will the other day. Looking very nervous in a bookshop. He would be, he can't <laughs> read. <laughs> what was it? He, he played bad. Yes, yeah, he played badly. As they say in Yorkshire, yeah. Yorkshire, yeah. Uh, it's like having a wet Indian on the show, isn't it? Him play bad. <laughs> Me see Long Ranger, him go long way. Is that your Scottish act? Him drop ball against Chelsea. <laughs> Big problem. Anyway, Wales. Anyway, he had some sort of excuse about, um, was it something to do with hay fever? He's a correct answer for three points. Well done, Dave Seaman. It's a phrase you don't hear very often, isn't it, these days? Well done, David Seaman. <laughs> In fact, it's all to do with the pollen count. Colin Charvis is a hay fever sufferer and his poor display was put down to the very high pollen count produced by the many flowering trees planted around the Canberra Stadium where the game was played. After being caught smiling during a humiliating defeat by Italy, Colin Charvis was described as the second most hated man in Wales after Osama bin Laden. Bin Laden's number one, of course, after he scored the crucial drop goal in Wales's 57-0 defeat by Afghanistan B. <laughs> Bill, Jonathan and Vernon, it's a cricketing excuse for you, watch oh, this. Right. Here's former England skipper Nasser Hussain making an impressive knock of 116 as he set about the South African bowling this summer. But on England's current tour of Bangladesh and playing against a provincial side, the prolific ex-skipper holed out for a rather ordinary 22. So what did he claim had put him off his stroke, Phil's team? 
Um, will you join me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, join me and my esteemed captain, Phil, Philip Tufnell, in welcoming Mr. Vernon Cage to the show, the young associate. Thank you very much. I've always thought, I mean, Vernon, you are a bit of a one for lead. The ladies admire you, don't they? And I've always, every time I've seen you on television, this is the first time we've met, I've always thought, that's what Jonathan thinks he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. <clears throat> Top barnets, good couple of barnets there. Actually, well, speaking, of, speaking of hair over there, that's a mixed bunch as well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that really is, there really is. There really is something for no one. My, hair for <laughs> my daughter has got three Barbies, and that's what they look like. <laughs> Actually, you know what, Phil? How much hair would you have left on if you if you had? I'll be pretty thin on top, to be fair. Yeah. Could you? Would you mind just demonstrating? So would you mind leaning over to David and flip the ponytail over? Let's have a look how you look. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a good look. Uh, I'd stick know. with it where you are, yeah. yeah I <laughs> have you ever played in Bangladesh? I have, yeah. We, um, I, I did play in Bangladesh once for the rest of the world. Oh, and uh, it was, it, it, the game was tied. Tied? What are the odds on that? I think it was about 20 to 1. I had 200 quid on it. <laughs> <laughs> NASA in Bangladesh. Well, I think the two go hand in hand. NASA is playing the English cricket team in Bangladesh. It's obvious that that guy needed to leave the field to go to lose. You yeah. do get a lot of runs in, in, in the sub front. But if you were... <laughs> 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 if you have ever got a lot of runs. <laughs> Can I just ask you something, though, Philip Tuffman? Remember the Yellow Pages advert where the bloke wanted to find the white hat? He needed the correct hat for the situation. Oh, yes, 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 the umpire. Yeah. Now, that's the view of cricket I like to have and hold. Yeah. Yeah. Now you tune, and then you see, what's he wearing there? He's wearing like a jockey's hat or something. <laughs> hey, that's yeah, like a steeplechaser's helmet on. What's that about? That's the first thing you put in, mate. You face Brett Lee from 22 yards, bowling 100 mile an hour at your head. It's like legalised stoning, mate. Yeah, only... <laughs> 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 but where's your courage? Where's your bravery? Where's your sense of style? It's in the box at the bottom of it. <laughs> Go on um, then, what's the answer, big man? You know the answer. They found a deadly king cobra in the outfield. It's correct for three points. Well done, Mr. Oh. Oh. I'll make a test for, for a snake bite. Is that way, the 12 snake bites, actually. <laughs> <laughs> NASA claims he was distracted by the appearance of a six-foot-long King Cobra in the Bangladesh outfield. Play was halted when the deadly snake was spotted on the pitch by spectators who ran onto the field and beat it to death with their chairs. A few minutes later, a rather shaky NASA was out. NASA went on to make 22 and the Cobra went on to make shoes. <laughs> there is a tragic side to this story. The following day an advert appeared in the Bangladeshi edition of Loot, the tale, one wicker basket and a flute. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Phil's team have three points. We're often very critical on this programme, but the English Premier League is still incredibly popular around the globe. And recently, according to an item in the Daily Mirror, and this is absolutely true, MI6 monitored a statement apparently broadcast by Saddam Hussein. I watched the Spurs-Everton game on Sky, he said, they were both rubbish. <laughs> Although, brilliantly, an MI6 spokesman did point out, we do not think this proves that Saddam Hussein is still alive, as this tape could have been made any <laughs> That's true, right? <laughs> Round two sees the return of the David Beckham challenge, so fingers on buzzers, the first question answered correctly wins you some bonus ones, and there's a point for every question that you get right. Okay, first question. What English food does Beckham claim he misses most of all in Madrid? Very large print alphabetic spaghetti. <laughs> um, is it pie and mash or pie and liquor or something? Pie, mash and liquor, yes, yeah. okay, these are your bonus questions. Before the turkey game, David Beckham had his eyebrows plucked so they resembled what? Our wings it was. Wings of? Uh, turkey. A turkey's wing. A, a eagle. A giant bird. There they are. <laughs> According to a survey by financial services group Virgin Money, where would most people like to see David Beckham's head? <laughs> Removed from his ass? Oh, no. oh no. That's our cat teeth. <laughs> Not anymore, Dave. <laughs> Leave it, mate. Leave it. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> where would like to see Beckham's head? Down the lavatory? Nope. How about on the front of the News of the World, above a headline saying, I married a pig from outer space? <laughs> That could still happen. I think it's, I um, it, it was a financial thing, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's to do with the um, banknotes. Yeah, on a £10 note, I'll give you a point for that. What does Beckham do approximately 20 times every day? 
<laughs> Come on. Come on, he's not yeah. that Wait, right, so you don't call him Golden Balls for nothing, you know? <laughs> no, they have to pay him like they have to do for everything else. <laughs> 20 times a day, he gets out a children's book and says to Brooklyn, read this to me, mate. <laughs> Phone, phone. He phones his family. He phones his family, yes. And as David says, he says, I love listening to Victoria's voice. Oh, well, he's on his own there, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> OK, fingers back on the buzzers yeah, yeah. again. Next bonus question. The Beckhams recently found a £5 million property in Madrid, but the deal collapsed at the last minute. What was wrong with the place? <laughs> Still team. They didn't like the acoustic. Because when they went in there, uh, Posh was singing, and David said that no matter what room he went to, he could still hear her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know this. No, this was, uh, was it sewage? Yeah. The sewage pipes. Had sewage underneath. pipes underneath it. Well done. Okay, your bonus questions now. Disney have plans to turn Bex into a what? Musical. Imagine yeah. the songs they would be. He if could I do was a rich man. Oh, I am. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Disney want to turn him into something? An icon for children. Sort of. A cartoon oh. character. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah. In a football yeah. cartoon. <coughs> All-star striker. According to the publicity, he's a footballer extraordinaire, but by night has fantastic superpowers. That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> In their latest advert for the Tokyo Beauty Center, David Beckham and his wife lie in a couple of baths covered in what? Shame. <laughs> <laughs> Big wads of cash. No. Hard cash. No. They were covered in, what were they covered in? They were two, two separate baths. Balls. balls for him and for her. Petals. Rose Crosses. petals, well done. Okay. Why is David Beckham the perfect sex symbol for Japanese women? Because he is waxed as bald as a surfboard. <laughs> he has no hair on any part of his nether region. His entire undercarriage has been stripped and plucked. <laughs> he has had what they call in gay circles the sack back and crack wax. <laughs> All your hair's gone, but unfortunately you cry for seven months after. <laughs> uh, what, does they find him sexy? Sort of. Because well, like them, he speaks English funny. No. <laughs> it's because he's only moderately sexy. According to Yuji Shimanami, the editor of the Japanese version of Beckham's autobiography, it's much easier for Japanese women to accept his moderately sexy appearance than Italian soccer player Francesco Totti, who is much too sexy for Japanese women. I okay. had that problem when I was there. Did you? Several women spontaneously combusted when I got a problem. <laughs> Are you sure they didn't just set fire to them? <laughs> seems far more likely to me. Okay, at the end of that round, Phil's team has six points and David's team has seven. Oh, no. Now, a few weeks ago, we pointed out the striking similarities between our own David Seaman and the bloke on the Pringles tube. <laughs> but this week, we spotted someone else. So, Phil, if you want to know what you'll look like in about five years' time, here's Cambodian tiger hunter Sek Yi. How many years, John? How many years? Many, not many. He's 122 years of age. Not many people who get a little peek into the future, are there? <laughs> okay, round three is the treble where personalities are linked to three objects. David's team, your subject for the treble is unfortunate comparisons, and your three are Chelsea and England one time bad boy John Terry. Flying Rugby Union teetotaler, Jason Robinson. And curiously coiffured England supremo, Sven Euron Eriksson. But who's been compared to an electric eel? Which one was likened to Ian Duncan Smith? And who was compared to a bowl of lamb soup? David King. Sven got to, with the electric eel. He's got, to, he's got to have electric eel down in pants, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, an electric eel, like, they're what, sort of fast and yeah, mobile and slippery, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got some eels in my fishing pond. Have you? I have. You've got a fishing pond? I've got, well, I've got a pond. Have you? What's in it? See? <laughs> <laughs> so you go fishing in your own fishing pond? No, 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 no. You're not allowed. I've got a big sign saying, no fishing. <laughs> sure, <Paul>. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, oh good, no. I'll go fishing for that. <laughs> <laughs> fishing. Oh, What's he like to play with? He's a Christian, isn't he? Yeah, Jason Robinson. Yeah, he is, yeah, born again. Yeah. Teetotaler and everything. Are there many teetotalers in rugby? Not many, no, I'm afraid. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have to stop drinking I mean, leading up to a match? What's your sort of cut-off point? Like quarter three. <laughs> <laughs> 
come on, leave the poor man alone. He can't hear what you're saying anyway. Oh. <laughs> Girls like to feel your ears. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to oh, jump, jump then, His reactions aren't that yeah. good nowadays. <laughs> Do you have them operated on afterwards, or...? No, no, I've had them drained a couple of times, but it's just... That's it, drained? Yeah, okay, just syringe, but... Eight gallons of lager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's hard, that's yeah, solid, solid, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I'm a footballer. <laughs> oh, is that really? We <laughs> 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 think that the eel must be, um, Jason... Jason, um, yeah. Right? John Terry, I don't know why, must be, um... Soup for some. Sven must be the quiet, dull man of football. He's collected three points. Well done. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it was Chelsea and England defender John Terry who was compared to a bowl of Macedonian lamb soup by a journalist. Speedy winger Jason Robinson was likened to an electric eel by French centre Thomas Castagnade. And Sven Euron Eriksson was compared to Ian Duncan Smith, reputedly by Gareth Southgate, for his uninspiring half-time team talk during the World Cup defeat by Brazil. We needed Winston Churchill, we got Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> but what England actually needed at half-time in that game was Gordon Banks. <laughs> Gareth Southgate recently hit out at the state of the modern game, saying that young English players needed to have more disciplined lifestyles. Many soon will, up at six, flop out seven, exercise yard eight. <laughs> Jason Robinson's officially the quickest man at the World Cup, apart from Jim Rosenthal speed-reading his bluffers guide to rugby during the commercial break. <laughs> Phil Steen, your subject for the treble is sporting hobbies, and your three sportsmen are... X-Rangers, now Blackburn under a performer, Lorenzo Amoruso. Shaven-headed, England front row totem, Steve Thompson. And relegation dodging, Bolton brick outhouse alike, Sam Allardyce. But Phil's team, who's a fanatical darts player? Who's handy on the roller skates? And who's at his happiest when foraging for fungi? Mushrooms. Phil likes a bit of mushroom, of course. That's the only reason he used to play most of his games in the autumn. You know, you, you, you can forget boycotts, keys in the wicket. The most interesting uh, sort of pitch inspection was him looking around for the mushrooms. <laughs> Interesting patch over the back there, could provide interesting for the spinner in about 12 hours time. <laughs> Have you ever, uh, either deliberately or inadvertently, sampled the delights of the magic mushroom? <laughs> Don't know what that means. We'll take that as a non-committal yes. <laughs> one, one, one might have slipped into the old stroganoff. Okay. <laughs> well, I know when you do the Australian tour, people lick toads. Have you ever licked a toad? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, no, I haven't. No, they, they, they men who have um, the old gear on the back of their back. The cane toes, they, they sweat it out. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> they, they're, they're like little <laughs> drug runners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drug offers. <laughs> yeah. No, but I've woken up next to a few. Oh, I haven't licked one. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> but Good Steve Thompson, toes. isn't he uh, on tour with England at the moment? Yeah. And I if I'm right in saying, is he not replacing you? No. <laughs> Are you gutted? Yeah. Because you would want to go sit here and listen to you lot. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right in thinking, though, that it is quite a gay sport? <laughs> well, I mean, maybe I'm not on the surface, guys, maybe you're not aware of the subtext, but clearly to the rest of us, it's all men together, hunkering down, rubbing up against each other. A lot of scrumming, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of hugging. A lot of hugging. The occasional penetration, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I believe those Maui players love it, don't they? <laughs> 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 I can't imagine an Italian playing darts somehow. No. Sam Allardyce, he's too much of a man to strap a rugby uh, roller skate on. Oh, you're going to say something else. He must be a dart player. <laughs> Big Sam being a dart player, it's the only double we're going to get this season. <laughs> <laughs> the bloke in the middle, uh, despite appearances presumably, would be a roller skater. Right. And the Italian fella obviously loves a little bit of uh, fine cuisine. With the mushrooms. Three points, thank yes. you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, in fact, Blackburn's Lorenzo Amoruso is a keen mushroom collector. 18 and a half stone England hooker Steve Thompson, incredibly, was a schoolboy British roller skating champion. And Bolton boss Sam Allardyce is a fanatical darts player and competed in this year's British Open. And like the true Bolton man he is, he went out in round one to an unfancied opponent. <laughs> David Beckham also likes a game of darts, although the last time he played, he was stuck on double eight for half an hour. Eventually, Gary Neville told him, it's 16, David. <laughs> I love you. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> Lorenzo Amoruso isn't the only player who picks mushrooms. Wayne Rooney spent his 18th birthday picking mushrooms as his fourth extra pizza topping, along with pork chops, chips, and a Cadbury's cream egg. <laughs> Steve Thompson was British roller skating champion, but changed sport when a scout spotted his natural aptitude for rugby. He was mooning out of a coach window and then shitting in a hotel sand bucket. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have nine points and David's team has ten. Blindfold time now as we play Field of Sportsmen. Phil and Jonathan, you're up uh, first this time. Would you like to take your position? Cheers, mate. Bernard, yeah. cheer us on. <laughs> Don't know where I'm going. <laughs> What's uh, wrong with you? <laughs> this is a good look. Oh, it's a bit kicked up there, but look at this. Custom job. Put it on when we get round here. I know the clock went back, but that's gone way back, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Are they Cuban heels there, Oscar? <laughs> look at you. And there's your cat down. Look at I you. Dressed like an ancient ninja. <laughs> <laughs> keep coming around towards me until what? I tell you to stop. Keep coming inward. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Stop there. And can we have our Quite first mystery up. guest, please? <laughs> okay. And your time starts now. <laughs> oh, what the <laughs> what the What's going on there? Did Firm Britain just fall over? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Hi, body armour. I've got body armour here. Yeah, they're armour. Oh, and, and oh. Is it, uh, oh. Is it David Guest, Liza Minnelli's husband, coming in for a rematch? <laughs> <laughs> what we got? Hey, the two of them. Ooh. <laughs> Is it the girls from Liberty X ready to take oh, on Cheryl Tweedy? <laughs> I tell you, what, you, need, you need to do a bit of firming up, love. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Hold on. You need a back sack and crack wax. What's this? <laughs> it's a very hairy What's Jordan. Going on here? This one ends in a wheel. <laughs> well, oh, it's like a big skateboard, man. I'm going to give you points for that. It's Pete and Dave Tatum, the GB off road skateboard no, champion. Where's your helmet? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, David and Rory, if you'd like to go to your positions, please. You'll have a similar amount of time to work out who's come between you. <laughs> However, you must be blindfolded in the traditional manner. Okay, can we have our second mystery guest, please? Get out of the way. <laughs> oh! Uh, Jesus. <laughs> has, um, has Jordan lost something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> has Lisa Riley ever had a love child with Tinky Winky? <laughs> <laughs> Is he a gut barger? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, oh, it's even got a ponytail. Who's ever pony <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> With the size of this, this will be me after two weeks. I'm going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I know this is. It's the man with two fish stuck to his face. <laughs> oh, and it's uh, oh. the moustache. It's the. Um, it's that your lookalike there. What's he called? <laughs> um, no, not the gay one. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Chris. What are those things? Chris things that I can't. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Come on, what's the Pringle? Pringle! It's the Pringle Dragon! Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, you got a cup of to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
the fact they were both standing there like that at the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at the end of that round, Phil's team have 12 points, but David's team have 13. Oh, wow. We finish as ever with the name game. The team in the league goes first, which is David's team. So, Phil, can you pass those on to Rory, please? You have a certain amount of time to get as many names as you can. And the time starts now. Uh, Everton scored a fluke goal against you. Big R fat Rooney. Scouser, yeah, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> uh, English scrub half, blackberries grow on them. Blackberries grow on Bracken, that's Kieran, right. Yeah. Kieran Bracken, Bracken. very good news. Chelsea keeper made an absolute howler last week. Could have changed. Could yeah. Oh, very well, good. Yeah. Um, your favourite defender, that one. <laughs> Bungie High. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't England spinner, same name as uh, Leeds player, David um, Rough player, played for England for a while. Southgate has the same name, Christian name. His second Garrett. name is a bit sort of, well, a bit Six. sort of, you know, no, he's got a mouth, sort of a bit like Mrs. Thatcher, and a bit sort of... <laughs> Spatty. Spatty, that's the one. Oh. Yeah, that's the one. Oh. Uh, this Canadian driver has the same surname as the bloke who goes looking in yellow pages, you know. J.R. Hartley. Hartley. Not J.R. Hartley, yeah. but... Um, you know, play by a Noel Coward, Sunday <laughs> Spirit. Oh, yeah, that Noel Coward, Blythe. Blythe, Blythe, yeah. Seven, surely yes, seven, seven, this time. Okay. Seven, what do you mean this time? We're seven. doing well this yeah, year. You've been doing well, you've been let down by your... This by your season, <laughs> my <laughs> team and I... Okay, here we go. Time starts now. Uh, this bloke is the better looking of the two brothers who appears to be in love with David Neville. Beckham. Gary Neville. Neville. Gary Neville. Neville. This one is, know that last of the summer wine, if yeah. the bloke in the hat was a little bit... Cam he he would be Campo. Campo. Ca Ivan Campo, well done. Yeah. All right, uh, second name is, uh, remember that in Psycho, Norman runs the Bates. motel, Bates. Second, first name is like Beadle. You've been Jeremy Bates. Jeremy, Jeremy Bates. Bates. All right, this is, uh, this is the bloke, he should, by the with that name, be a porn star. He is Ron, Ron Jeremy. No, no, he is a porn star. <laughs> this bloke, his second name is, in the old days, in the 70s, if you saw a lady with large breasts, you go, you don't get many of them to that. Pam. And the first name is both uh, uh, a word for your penis. <laughs> no. Dick, Dick Town, well done. All right, this is an Australian bowler. Uh, first name is something the menace. Dennis. Dennis, Dennis second Dennis name. Lily. Dennis Lilly. Dennis Lilly, uh, this is, there's a band with the second name, and this is, welcome to the Hotel California. California. Okay, yeah, we know California. <laughs> What's the name of the band? Woo, woo, woo. No, not we. <laughs> There's a mouse. Oh, 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 eagle. 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 Right, first name is, it's a Welsh name. First name, in the morning, I have for breakfast, all sheep. Bron. No, not all bron. Bron. All bron, which is bron, that's right, bron. bron. And second name is, if you don't want to lose, you want to win. Win, bron, win, 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 eagle. Win, win, okay. Eagle. Second name, lovely wife's pudding. Comes from those nice people who make. Ambrosia. Ambrosia. First name, Mr. Polo. Well done for discovering so much of the world. What's your name? <laughs> not <laughs> Cork. <laughs> It's like an Italian name for Mark. Come on, come on, come on, David's team have 18 points, but this week's winner is Phil Steele. Oh. David Rory and Phil, Phil, Jonathan and Vernon. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Well, 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 well.